I'm looking for someone, can you help me? Uh, they're brave. They have balls the size of a pumpkin. Well, magical orbs that float around them, something like that. Um, they have a caravan, or, or they just wear really big pants. I don't know how they're holding 62 apples and like 57 books. Um, and lastly, they like when people do good things, and they don't like when people do bad things. I don't know, I'm reading, I'm reading their horoscope. So, have you seen this person? This, this sounds a lot like you. Okay, well, let me ask you, have you ever had the nickname The Champion of Cyrodiil? Because that's who I'm looking for. Only this person is going to understand the wonderful references that I will be discussing here. Today, I will be listing five cross-references to Oblivion in Skyrim. Let's get into it. Starting off with number five, we have a familiar family name. If you go into the Bee and Barb in Riften at nighttime, you can find a dark elf named Romulan Dreth. And you can sometimes hear him go up to the innkeeper and strike up a conversation, not in any cordial way, but instead to boast. He talks about how his ancestor killed a dozen Imperial guards before being captured and taken to prison. Also, that he single-handedly fought off the Mythic Dawn while protecting the life of the current Emperor. This man he speaks of is Valen Dreth. Ah, ring a bell, his face is the very first you see when you start a new game in Oblivion. He's in a cell across from yours, mocking you, making fun of you depending on what race you choose, telling you you're going to die in this place. There's no way he took out a dozen Imperial Guards by himself, come on. And, and he's, not the, he's not the one who fought off the Mythic Dawn, it was you! His descendant, Romulan, has been building him up to be greater than he was. Listen, kid, your forefather was a wuss, right? I clipped myself into his cell, said, yeah, what's up, you got a problem? The threat stopped immediately. I mean, he tried to distract me, he was like, oh, I've got a rumor for you, this is interesting. Not gonna work, so... You want the real truth, there it is. And even the innkeeper, when she's hearing this, she doesn't believe it. She says to him that he keeps adding something new every time he tells the story. Sorry, but the Dreth name does not, and should not, have a very good reputation. Number four, not even death can stop an assassin. In the Dark Brotherhood, after the quest Bound Until Death, you're going to get an ability called Summon Spectral Assassin. And it says right in the description, this is the ghost of the famous assassin known as Lucien Lachance. He's come back from the dead. The Dreadfather must really like him. Well, that's, that's not the impression we got back there in Oblivion, at least for a little while. See, Lucien is the one who introduces you to the group. He's the first person to make contact with you after you've killed someone innocent. As such, he's in charge of your initiation. He makes you go out and find an old man named Rufio, and if you kill him, then you can join, which you do. But even further than that, there's, there's quite a lot you two do together. He plays an integral part of the Brotherhood questline. Actually, so far as determining, there's a traitor within the Brotherhood who needs to be stopped before every single member ends up dead. After that, confusion ensues. <laughs> Now, however it is that he dies, you know, maybe from old age, maybe he gets hung upside down with his genitals cut off, I, I don't know, I'm spitballing here. He was so devout to the Brotherhood that Sithis has brought him back. So, yeah, if you have any questions about the Void and what it's like floating through, you two will have a lot to catch up on. Number three, not a lot of people caught this one. If you're in the Soul Cairn and you're speaking to the souls, they have a rare line of dialogue. And, no, I, I mean rare, I was literally here for like 40 minutes before I could get one of them to say this. But the line is... I don't know how I ended up here. All I said was the word, Oh, no, 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 from... Oh, wait a minute, that's not the right line. Sorry, it's it's this one. Just step into the painting, he said. Yeah, sure, like, it's that simple. At first you're like, what, is that, is that a Harry Potter reference? But no, if you've played the quest, you'll know what this means. This is a reference to the quest, A Brush With Death, back in Oblivion. Just like the soul said, you literally have to step into a painting. A famous artist who has a magical paintbrush that lets him enter his own artwork to get even more detail has been trapped inside of his latest work. He needs your help to get out. He needs his brush back. So you have to fight through his, you know, creative, colorful world. Watch out for the painted trolls, man, those things are brutal. They wanted to be portrayed at least twice the size, and yeah, they're bitter about it. I'll admit, they're cuter than most trolls. They're pretty cute. But don't feel bad about killing them. Think of it like a slip of the brush, right? little mess up, that's all. It's like when your elbow slips off the side of the table. Doesn't mean the artist can't go back and do a touch-up later on, so stab these things to their water-colory graves. And if you manage to find a way out, well, good for you. The soul's back in the soul care, and they need a lot more than a paintbrush to get out of there. Number two, I think Cicero has been watching us for a lot longer than we thought. If you read his journal, the first one, and you go to the very end, you can read about his arena contract. Well, it turns out he had to kill the grand champion of Cyrodiil. How's he gonna do it? By getting very, very close. He posed as a starstruck fan until he was allowed to follow the grand champion around, right? Be a squire, carry his items, that sort of thing. But once they had reached the forest, and they were all alone, Cicero jumped on him and cut his throat! contract completed. Okay, well, with the exception of, of, uh, of the bloody bit, this sounds a bit familiar, doesn't it? This is a reference to the adoring fan back in Oblivion. When you became Grand Champion, you unlocked him as a follower who would, quote, worship the ground you walk on, and that is exactly what he would do, right? Overzealous and overjoyed, every conversation was him spitting out just how great you are. Do you want me to carry your things? Do you want me to kiss your boots? Do you want me to wait here? I'll wait here. 
Yeah, only Cicero could be crazy enough to want to fill shoes as, um, as warped as these. But the job got done, so you do what you must. Although, it, it does make you wonder, whenever you got into combat, the fan would just run away. He never actually fought for you. He doesn't want to die. Maybe he thinks you'll die in the process and save him the hassle. Was he too trying to kill us all those years? And quickly before number one, we have an honorable mention, and that is Maik the Liar. He's been in every Elder Scrolls game thus far, always giving us good insight, for example, that it's uh, it's good that people wear clothes, right? Only sick people would want to see Maik naked. Well, Maik, they're, they're doing a lot more than that on Nexus Mods. And number one, we have a connection between the unimaginable. So, in Skyrim, if you head just west of the Broken Fang Cave, you'll find a small pond, and in it are the fossilized remains of... A giant mud crab, dear lord, the legends are true. The creatures can in fact get to the size, and to take it a step further during the quest Kind's Sacred Trials, you'll actually be able to encounter the spirit of this very crab. Look at the size of this thing! It being a ghost, you know, it makes it a little bit better, but imagine if this thing was real right in the shell! Well, hold your breath, because this is a reference to something far more disturbing back in Oblivion. If you go into Greenmead Cave and you continue there for a pretty long time, you'll eventually come up on a frightening scene. A great beast hulking over a pile of skeletons and animal carcasses. And as you get closer, you'll see what it is. A giant mud crab right there in the claw in the shell. And look at its legs. It's like a large spider. It moves like one too because of its increase in size. This thing darts and jumps at you. It could decapitate you with just one close of its pincer. Jump on you and squeeze you until your lungs collapse. It's, just, it's not right. Stop it, nature. Stop. Okay. Well, although I will say it, at the end of the day, it's just a mud crab. I mean, so it's, it's painfully easy to kill. I mean, even with a small dagger. But, but... I think the generations are getting stronger. By the time we hit the Elder Scrolls 6, who knows what this thing will be like. And there you have it, five cross-references to Oblivion in Skyrim. If you enjoyed the video, please like, comment, and subscribe. And down below, please tell me, is there another one you would add to this list? <laughs> Alright, thank you very much for watching. Now, if you need me, I'll be back in that painting that we mentioned earlier. I'm going to paint myself a little pond, and then a little boat to go swimming in that pond. If you would like to join me, please paint yourself some little tickets to come on board my boat.